We do evening, everyone. Nice that we are back to study. We are going to talk about, we have been doing a, a series of uh, seven judges. So we want to go into our study now. We are dealing with the, church, the second church. Marla. So now let's have a word of prayer. Let's end with this. Our Heavenly Father, thank you. And pray that you beg and sue. Let's come and yes. But we know the lesson and how to apply them in our daily life. We walk then with Jesus. Amen. Remember, it is the Revelation series. So we're dealing with the seven churches. As part. Now, the church of Simona, and I dealing with Ephesus, as church. Now, let's look at Simona. The word Simona is Peter, Greek, man. That's the meaning of Simona. Now, let me have first read the text as it appears in the Bible. But let's first see the seven elements in Paul's loop for uh, one day. I do this to the church pastor, the description of Jesus, the commendation, the censor, exaltation. Now, let's read the text. And unto the end of the church, Luna, right. This thing says the first and the last, which was dead, and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation, and poverty. But thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and don't, but as I said, in ten days, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee crown. In that overcoming, there are not part elements as open of the history of the of this. When I was named for the word ma, which is an aromatic gum resin that is bitter to the taste, but sweet to the smell. So it is a smell that is sweet. But when you test it, it is very bitter. And it was used to embalm the dead first century, around 1939, when they go to the, the bar to go and harm Jesus' body. And they, found, and they could not because the Sabbath in. So the church in Simona, <clears throat> first bitter persecution. And this persecution, and death just emitted the first grand testimony of faithful commitment to Christ, the midst of idolatry. So every every year, every single year, uh, in this center of emperor worship, each year a family had to burn incense to the God or to Caesar. And once you do not Burn these incense, incense to 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 the, to the emperor, to the, the god emperor. It was risk of death. So when you burn incense to the god, to Caesar, then you would issue the certificate that you have done that. So every year, that's what they had to do. It was also sent up worship for a number of false deities such as Aphrodite, Apollo. And Zeus and all these had temples in the city. And uh, many, many of these, uh, like the, the mission, were ruled from that time to that time and also brought persecution for those who refused to burn incense. The Caesar, Polica, was born in AD 70 and was a disciple of John and the pastor of the Simona church for a while. He was put to death around 50 years after Revelation was written. And he was banned from the 
refusing to proclaim Caesar Curios, Curios, and Caesar is Lord. Some have said he was the total of the matter in similar. When put forward in the stadium, he was asked to make the statement away with atheists, meaning away with Christians, who Rome referred to as atheists, or they would not recognize the gods of Rome or, or the emperor as a god. Instead, he looked to the crowd and mentioned saying, I war with the atheist, meaning the Romans, was God. Holy Cup was then at 86 years and ran, then ran through. That is what happened to that man. It says, I am the first and the last. So there's a mention of the first and the last. We have seen that there was there was a there was embodying the dead. There is no coincidence that the word Simona was given for all these people who gave up their lives as a sweet fragrance to heaven. Yet it was a bitter. It was very bitter for them. Yes. Now there is a mention of the first and the last. Why does Jesus say this? <coughs> Isaiah 44, verse 4. Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, the first and with the last, I am he. So Jesus is saying, when it comes to, you, you are there suffering, but know that I was there and I will be there. Thus saith the Lord of the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. And being me, beside me, there is no God. So they were being comforted when Jesus says, I am the first and the last, that please, if I will be there, and I have been there. So in other words, I am the one whom you are, you are dying for. Isaiah 48 verse 12. How can I do me, O Jacob, and Israel, my, my call, I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. There are many texts that prove to you. He are my witness, he says, the Lord and my servant, whom I have chosen, that he may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there is there was no God for me, neither shall there be. He is the first and the last. Now that is a mention of I was dead and is alive. So why are they talking about the dead? Because there is a lot of death language in Simona. I want to say Simona means bittersweet ma, and is a touch of persecution, such that is persecuted. Christ was dead and is alive. What does he? Why does he say was dead and is alive? Because these people died, were dying, and they had to be comforted that Christ knows them, and he was also once dead. So even if they're dying. Don't worry. <clears throat> know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That is, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should hope fullness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall, also, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So he's comforting them that, no, 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 even if you're dying, whatever is happening, there I know. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not have sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead, now listen to this, for he that is dead is free from sin. So that's Christ saying no. No. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Isn't this a comfort to the church of Simon? Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. So, <clears throat> whatever is happening to you, don't fear, because I am now let us look at the tribulation. I know the tribulation. 
the word tribulation there is uh, thripsis and and um, and it is interesting how they, they, they put it pressure afflicted anguish burden the person tribulation trouble the church during this period was crushed under the pressure Christ knows, tell them, I know how you're being afflicted. I know your anguish. I know what you're going through. So there's nothing we are going through that Christ doesn't know. And there is also a mention of poor, yet rich. So, what is this poverty they're talking about? Jesus, during the period of Simon, had very little of the world's goods. The word poverty here, as we shall see, is a, is a strong word. It means to be very dirty poor, which is okay. Let's read some text, Luke 12, 19 to 21. And I will say, <clears throat> this man who built stores and stores and bands and said, now I'm going to eat all my things. And I will say to my soul, soul, Thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thou so shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and he is not rich to a God. So that is poverty which the Bible talks about in, in, in spirit, and that of the rich of God. So we are looking at, the, you can be, you can have all the treasures on this earth, but you are not rich with God. So the Apostle Paul contrasted those who are rich in this life, with those who are truly rich in the sight of God. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, high not trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us spiritually all things to enjoy, that they do good and that they be rich in good works, ready, distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in stuff for themselves a good foundation, and the time to come, that they may live hold on eternal life. So Christ saying that we are supposed to be rich toward God, and in this present age, those who are those who are rich in worldly goods will not benefit anything, but you're supposed to be rich in good, good works. That's what Timothy has told us. James thought about that. In his text, <clears throat> James, who verse 5 to 6, says, Listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor things, the poor of this world, to be rich in faith? And the heirs of the kingdom, which <clears throat> to those who love him. So, it's contrasting. Now, let's also look at Moses. Life of Moses is a living illustration of what it means to be rich in the sight of God, but poor in the sight of men. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, when he was come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin, as his esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the one. So had Moses loved the treasures of Egypt and chose the treasures of Egypt instead of those in heaven, he would be now a mummy in the tombs of Egypt. But we we'll know that Moses now is in heaven enjoying. So he made a very wonderful choice. Revelation 29 says, I know thy works, tribulation, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are. 
So they are those who oppose <coughs> Jews. So who is a Jew? Let's first look at a Jew. Who is a Jew? The word Jew is Judaism, which is Judean, belonging to, to Judah. Okay. Revelation 5, 4, 5 says, And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and read the book, either to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. So what is this lion and why is it the root of David? The word lion here, when you look into the strongs, tell you the lexicon, tell you it's a brave and mighty hero. Indicating great strength. That's why Satan is seen as a roaring lion, meaning as a very strong lion coming. And, and Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the strong man in the tribe. Second Timothy 4 17 says, Not notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the, the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the strong man. So he was delivered out of the lion, means the strong and mighty hero. Now, who, why refer to Judah? Why Judah? Now, Hosea 11, 12 says, Everyone encompasseth me about with life, and the house of Israel with deceit. But Judah yet ruleth with God and is faithful with us. So Judah was the only faithful, consistent uh, tribe, and that's why Christ came from Judah. Today, this has been mistranslated, and when you, when you read here in NIV, it says, Ephraim has surrounded the movie, lies the house of Israel with the seed, and Judah is unruly against God, even against the faithful. Holy one. So the Bible says, if he says, Judah is ruled with God and is faithful. And this one says, no. No. So that is already an obliteration of exactly what we want to see here. Now, the Jews came and told Jesus that we are Jews. We are the, the children of, of, of Abraham. And they were called Jews, yet they were not really Jews. How do we know? They were false Jews. They answered him, we, we be Abraham's seed, and we are never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou that he shall be made free? I know that he are Abraham's seed, Jews, they are Jews. But he seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. Speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do not, and you do that which you have seen with your father. Then answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If you are Abraham's children, <coughs> you would do the works of Abraham. So true Jews do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Could Abraham kill Jesus? No. He was just to see his, his day. And he saw it and was glad. And this one, the Jews, they want to kill him. Now, if they were Abraham's children, true Jews, they told them plainly, you are of your father. They have no ecumenical correctness, no political correctness, plainly. Of your father, the devil. The last of your father, he will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and about not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. So he tells them, You are false Jews. And John chapter 8, verse 33. For so, so he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is of outward. In the flesh. What was the sign of 
as Jew, how to one side of the Jew, circumcision. Okay. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. So how many false Jews do you have today? For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. As many as you, as you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither born free nor free. There is neither male nor female. Ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ is, Christ is, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So the true Jews are those who do the, the will of God and follow God in everything he tells them. So were, were these real Jews? No, they claimed, the Israelites claimed they were Jews, but they were not. An example is so, that says, if you examine, he was a Jew, circumcised the eighth day, and, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, so, so, why persecutest thou me? This is a Jew, but persecuting God's people. And he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou art It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. In other words, he was a Jew, but persecuting people of God. <laughs> These were false Jews. Then we have a reference to the synagogue of Satan. So we have seen the false Jews. And today we shall we can see that there are many people who can claim to be Adventists, but they're really false Adventists. And the Bible says, I know them that call them that. Call them themselves Adventists, but really are not. And they're persecuting those who practice Adventism at first. Testimonies to ministers and gospel workers says Satan has a large confederacy, his church. Christ calls them the synagogue of Satan. So those who confederate with Satan are the synagogue of Satan because the members are the children of sin. The members of Satan's church have been constantly working to cast off the divine law and refuse the distinction between good and evil. So every time you have people who cast away the law of God and are working all what they can do to confuse and the distinction between good and evil is not seen. Bringing ecumenism, that is the synagogue of Satan. <clears throat> Satan is working with great power in, in and through the children of disobedience to exalt treason and apostles as truth and reality. So they're exalting disobedience. The children, the children of disobedience to exalt treason Today, you will notice that you, you find that today someone can marry, two, has two wives, but is a church member. And say, no, 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 because the other one never took him to the state, so it's, it's fine, he can get another one. That is, that, that, that is uh, uh, taking, allowing adultery, taking adultery always continue. And at this time, the power of his satanic inspiration is moving the living agencies carry out the great rebellion <coughs> against God that commenced in heaven. We were on December 4, 1900, paragraph 6 says, Christ speaks to the church over which Satan presides as the synagogue of Satan. Its members are the children of disobedience. They are those who choose sin who labor to make the void the law, holy law of God. So if someone labors to make the Sabbath void by putting a lot of meetings and this and this and this and, and, and trying to make sure that the law of God, especially the Sabbath, is none and void, do you know that that is the synagogue of Satan? It is Satan's work to mingle evil with good 
and to remove the distinction between good and evil. Christ would have a church that labors to separate the evil from the good, whose members will not willingly tolerate wrongdoing, but will expel it from the heart and life. Today they will tell you, no, it has no problem to eat flesh. There's no problem. It's not salvation. Then they ask them, excuse me, is it salvation or to eat the pig? How come if the pig is, is salvation, but eating any flesh is not salvation? Marriage is not salvation? So are we saved by, by marriage? But if you keep the marriage and you keep the Sabbath and these are not salvation, then how come the diet is a problem? These are the synagogues. The sin of the Jews in Christ's day was actually the same sin that is committed by the Christian world today. The Christians say, I love Jesus, but they crucify his law. But to crucify the law means to crucify Jesus because the law is the reflection of Jesus. So if you crucify the reflection, then you have crucified the one who is being reflected. In this context, and why to explain. The great sin of the Jews was a rejection of Christ. The great sin of the Christian world would be to reject the law of God, especially of his government in heaven and on earth. <laughs> so, refusing the law of God is refusing Christ, because Christ was the embodiment of the law, the law in body. So if you refuse the, the law in action, then how do you... The law. And if you keep the law in action and, and, and refuse the law, it's the same thing. All these are the synagogue of Satan. The Jews claim to believe the reflection, but reject the origin. First, you reject the reflection, Christians will reject the reflection and claim to follow the origin. It is impossible to love Christ and despise the law because the law is a reflection of who he is Jesus or the law in living God. The embodiment of the law of God, which is the transcript. So, the synagogue of Satan are those who labor, even within the ranks of Christianity, put the law of God down. Let's look at the 10 days of tribulation. It says there, Fear none of those things which thou suffer, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that he may be tried, and he shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee life. So Jesus warned <coughs> the church of Simona that they would suffer a period of severe persecution by using the Roman emperors as his instrument, which is the dragon. Satan would throw some of them into prison. That's their faith. Right. The word tried is the same as the word the one used in Revelation, where we told that the apostolic church tested those who proclaimed the apostles. The Greek word is perilazo. If you look at it, test, pride, is denies, entice, discipline, examine. So when it says you will be examined, you have 10 days of tribulation. And you will be tried. You will be tried and you will have 10 days of tribulation. That means you will be scrutinized. This was a time. Rising. Who stand? Tests are meant to make us, not to break us. If you look at all these texts, they will show you that Daniel and David and Job, all these, the tests were there, make them better. And the 10 days of where by the emperor, uh, Euclidean, applying the Yade principle, 10 days of persecution that the church of Simona suffered lasted from 03 to 313 AD. During this period, the pagan Roman emperor, Euclidean, unleashed merciless persecution against the Christians, the, the Lutheran church, Torian, Roland, Bayton describes this period. Now look at that. Revelation 12, 30, 
16 tells us, Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of the great eagle that might fly into the wilderness for her place where she perished for time, times, and half a time from the presence of the serpent. So Satan, the serpent, or the dragon, which is the, emp the, the Roman emperor, emperors, are the ones that are being spoken about here. The, and the beast of Revelation 13, Revelation 13, 2 tells us that the dragon gave him who his power, his seed, and God's authority. So <clears throat> the dragon by then was was um, pagan Rome and gave his seed and power and great authority to the Christian Rome. And this man, Colin H. Byton, in the book Christendom, he writes the following. Page 89. Early in the fourth century, the Emperor Declaration initiated a further attempt at extermination. The persecution of the Christians began in 303 with an edict requiring that church buildings be destroyed and all copies of the scriptures be signed to be publicly banned. Christians lost their civil status and protection of the laws. Next, an edict against the official. A third edict was, a third edict was in effect an invitation to repent. But fourth decree, the fourth decree death for Christians. <clears throat> the roosters of martyrs was so swelling that the days of the, the year no longer suffice for there. What this man writes in his book to show us what really happened. And to tell us. That this period of persecution finally came to an end when the Emperor Constantine the Great signed the decree toleration in the Edict of Milan, the year 13. A few years later, at the Council of Nicaea, 325, Eusebius described how bishops had suffered during the 10 year tribulation. So he's telling us when they met in this Council of Nicaea, what happened? One had his two hands in capital incapacitated because they had been seared with burning iron. Others were missing ears and others had their right limb cut off according to Zidias, this one, an assembly. So they came to this meeting of this year and all of them had really suffered a lot of it. Be faithful unto them. The promise that Jesus made to the church was a proper response to the persecution that they had experienced. Jesus admonished them and promised to be faithful unto them and will give them a crown. Revelation 12 of the death. And the word there, crown, see there, is Stephanos. So the word Stephano means crown. So he was given a crown. So they will be given a Stefano. Lies in the public games, a symbol of honor, generally. But more conspicuous and elaborate than the symbol of So they will receive an honor of having died faith. Blessed is the man Yeah, we are going to James. Tells us the same thing. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown, which the Lord hath promised to them at last. Another comfort, as Peter 5 4, when the chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8. <laughs> and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall turn into fable. But watch thou in all things. 
and your affliction, do the work of an evangelist, take full proof of thy ministry. I am now ready to be offered. Time of my departure is at hand. So we have to insist and stand on the truth. Patrick's and Prophets, page 77, Ellen White says, because we want to see what she's Whatever through faith in the land of God, Saul renounces the service, but on his wrath is kindled. The holy life of Abel testified against Satan's claim that it is impossible a man to keep God's law. When Cain moved by the spirit of the wicked man, so that he could not control Abel, he was so enraged that he destroyed his life. So, Satan knows that to remove him and we see what God will do. So kill him. Whatever there are any who will stand in the vindication, the righteousness of the love of God, the same spirit will be manifested against them. You can get in the touches. It is the spirit that through all the ages has set up the stake and kindled the burning fire to the disciples of Christ. But the cruelties heaped upon the follower of Jesus, are instigated by Satan and his hosts because they cannot force him to submit to their country. It is the rage of a vanquished foe. Every matter of Jesus has died. And the final promise that Jesus made to the faithful church of Simona is that they will not be hurt by the second death. Once again, the promise is, is congress to their experience. Many of them were slaughtered, but the death they suffered only the first death from which there will be a resurrection. Jesus has instructed his followers not to fear those who would kill the body, but not the soul. Also, Paul assures us that not even death itself can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. For those who are in Christ, death has lo lost its sting because Jesus went into the tomb and locked it. Out. Okay. And when Satan sees that he cannot, he cannot destroy the church by killing them, because the more he killed them, the more they grew, the more they became many, and the more people believed. Then they said, no, 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 no. I think I have to change the strategy. But the strategy is, let me now, and let me go and become their friend. And even the Jesuits say, if you cannot fight them, then become their friend and destroy them with friendship. Satan now turns, no, 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 let us now infiltrate them. So the next step we shall look at, Church of Pergamos, which is the church of compromise, uh, when the church highly elevated, uh, elevated and, and that is the only way Satan win this church. See you in the next one as we look at the church of Pergamum, because the Satan has seen that even if he destroys them, the blood of the saints, the more he slaughtered them, the more they became Christian. So the next Strategy plan B is now the full trade. We shall start in the next, the next episode. Uh, Thank you, Heavenly Father, for having me. Please help us to take the lesson we have learned from you. They may help us to stand for what is right, no matter what comes. Because they have proved us that neither death separates us from love. Help us, Lord. And for the truth forever. Amen.